cooking with Kevin. On the menu today, I'm going to be doing a gluten-free pizza crust with a lightly herb seasoned potato wedges on the side, and then we're going to have a guest, Amanda, who is an excellent chef with gluten-free and dairy-free foods as well as others, and she'll be sharing one of her secret lemon bar recipes. Let's go over here and make the crust. So we have a cup and a half of gluten-free all-purpose baking flour, and we're going to add one teaspoon Italian seasoning, one teaspoon basil, a quarter cup of cornstarch, a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese grated, one teaspoon of xanthan gum, and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and one half teaspoon salt. Now we're going to mix all of these things. Let me grab a spoon here. We're going to mix up, and this is going to be the base the, uh, flour mixture for the dough. And just mix it until it's all well blended. Alright, so now we're going to leave this, okay? We'll head to the egg mixture, and we're going to add one teaspoon of agave nectar. I choose agave nectar because it's uh, sweeter than sugar, but it's half the glucose and you don't have to use as much of it. So I'm going to beat it in with the egg. Using a fork here. And we're going to add one and a quarter teaspoons of olive oil, extra light. And then we're going to add a half teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and one half teaspoon of minced garlic. All right, now we're going to move on to the yeast pot. So we've put a cup of lukewarm water. So you want it to be where you put your wrists underneath the water and it doesn't burn or it's not cold. It's right in the middle. This is very important because it could kill the yeast. So we're going to take the equivalent of one quarter ounce packet of yeast and we're going to add it to the lukewarm water. Then we're going to take one teaspoon of agave nectar and we're going to uh, mix until it's dissolved in there. You want to get all the yeast dissolved in there and it will start to form uh, solids in there and start bubbling. And we want to wait for it to bubble so it will take about three to five minutes. So while it's doing that, I'm going to send it over to Tim for some interesting facts. Tim, what do you got for us? Wow, thank you Kevin. Today, gluten-free is the topic. Gluten-free is affecting about 6% of the population, which turns out to be about uh, 18 million people. And uh, so it's just astounding that so many people cannot have certain products. And we're going to be I'll give about three examples of what gluten-free really is and some inf information on how you know if you are gluten-free. Alright, so since just three little easy little um, what gluten is, it's barley, wheat, and rye. And there's, you know, as, as you start going through the grocery aisle, you start reading what is in the products, and, you may, and you're like, man, gluten, wheat is in this, barley is in that. It's like, you gotta be really careful on what you look for in the grocery store. But thank goodness, grocery stores are starting to carry more items that are gluten-free for people who are, um, you know, those 6% six, six of the population is able to enjoy the food of what everyone else loves to enjoy. Alright, so some symptoms of gluten-free diagnosis are um, abdominal pain, cramping, diarrhea, and some bloating may occur. So if you decide, if you are thinking that you are gluten-free and you have those, a couple of those symptoms, check out your, you know, go check out the doctor. Um, they're actually, you know, they might not have, there's not really a, 
100% gluten-free test is just that if you are experiencing some of those pains, we might have you put on a gluten-free diet for a certain amount of weeks, and then that will determine if you are need gluten-free products. And so that was gluten-free in the know today, and I just hope you have a, a great rest of the time in the kitchen learning more about gluten-free products that Kevin's making today. Thank you, Tim. Now, it has foamed very well. You uh, see all those bubbles. That's what you're looking for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add this mixture to the egg mixture. We're going to combine those. And next, we'll just add it to our flour mix. And we'll mix it all in. So it's going to be a little soupy. But that is normal. With gluten-free um, flours, unfortunately, you can't get it thick like a traditional flour without it being super green. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to mix it until there's no lumps left. And now we're going to spread it out onto the crust pan here. I prefer to do a flat clay um, because it uh, allows for even cooking and it comes off a lot easier. I sprayed this with a nonstick spray. And so we will put this on here now and start spreading it on with a spoon, preferably, because otherwise it will stick to your hand. And as you put it out, you kind of want to leave the outer edge a little thicker than the inside. And you know, keep it round like a traditional pizza when you're pushing it on there. You almost have all of the dough. What we're going to do is once we have it all on there, we're going to um, put it in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes until it firms up and begins to rise. After that, we'll take it out and we'll actually put the sauce and the toppings on. So you'll see how I'm leaving the edge thicker and making sure, of course, that the middle is flat. Kind of pushing up the edges, make a crust. Want to make sure it's even and flat. All right, looks good. Okay, so now we're going to put this in the oven. And we'll let it firm up and rise for 10 to 12 minutes. So while this is going, I'm going to send it over to Kelsey now. She's going to give us a little lesson. Kelsey? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, being lactose intolerant myself, uh, I was surprised to hear that one out of every 10 Americans was lactose intolerant. About 30 to 50 million Americans have lactose intolerant issues. And did you know that actually the most common people that have lactose intolerant issues are Asian, African, Hispanic, and Native American descent. Um, the least likely people to have it are Eastern and Western um, uh, European descent. Okay, so milk allergy and lactose intolerant are two completely separate things. Uh, milk allergy is actually your body's trying to fight it as a harmful invader and it can cause severe itching, um, digestive issues that cause your stomach to be in severe agonizing pain um, and can even lead to an allergic reaction or your hospitalized. Whereas lactose intolerant, you can still consume, but it just makes you feel very uncomfortable and you can't digest it well. Um, so the milk uh, allergy, seek your doctor and make sure that you can clarify if you're you have a milk allergy or if you're lactose intolerant. Being lactose intolerant myself, I realize that it's not as difficult as some people lead you to believe. There are so many healthy alternatives out there. There's soy milk, coconut milk, almond milk. 
There's soy-based uh, ice cream. Uh, there's dairy-free um, items everywhere. Uh, for those ladies out there, there's dairy-free chocolate, which is wonderful to figure out. Um, and it's uh, if it's unavoidable, there are dairy tablets. And always consult your doctor before taking another medication. Lactose can be found in many products that you don't believe. So always check your labels when you're going to the grocery store and buying items. Look for titles like whey, curds, and dry milk. Um, and if these products aggravate your stomach, uh, make sure to avoid those. So um, those are just some helpful tips about lactose and so on that I know um, after finding out that I was. So I hope this helps and back to you, Kevin. Thank you, Kelsey. So now, while that is doing uh, its thing in the oven, what we're going to do is we're going to head off over here and we're going to get the potato wedges going. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel about seven to eight potatoes until clean. And once this is done, then we're going to take the potato and cut it in half and start slicing it down the side like so. Once it's been sliced like this, then we're going to cut it down the middle to make wedges that are about like this. And then we'll put them flat on an even surface on a, on a non-stick baking sheet. Of course, I sprayed it just in case because sometimes the potatoes will stick. Then we're going to take extra virgin olive oil and drizzle it over the potatoes. You don't want to do too much because then they'll become actually kind of soggy. So I kind of just do like a motion like that. And then we're going to take some Italian seasoning, sprinkle it over it, and then finally we'll do a little bit of salt. All right, so now we're going to put these in the oven at 425 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes or until they start turning brown and a fork can go through it easily. to take your favorite recipes and make them a little bit healthier. Here's two alternative sweeteners that you can use in your recipes. The first one is organic blue agave. This was used in the recipe for the pizza crust and you can use it just like sugar. It has a lower glycemic index and it's 25% sweeter than normal sugar. The second choice that you could use is Stevia. This one happens to be vanilla cream sweet drops. It's great as a coffee creamer too. And now the crust is ready to take out. It is firmed up and it has risen a little bit so that we're able to now put the sauce on as well as the other toppings. The toppings are all up to you, of course. I'm choosing to do turkey pepperoni, which is about 50% less fat, and olives, um, mozzarella, and cheddar cheeses, and then I'm going to slice up fresh tomatoes um, to put on after the fact. So I'm just kind of smearing it around, leaving the crust still, because you still want a little bit of that bread on the edge. Alright, so now I'm going to put the mozzarella down first. and then I'll top it off with the cheddar on top. Kind of make sure it's evenly spread out. And the amount of cheese is all up to you. It's all user's preference for sure. And then we're going to put the olives down next and then we'll put the pepperoni on top to kind of hold everything together. I found that olives tend to roll off a little bit more than the pepperoni and so they need the cheese to kind of ground them. So now we'll do the pepperoni in a circular motion around the outside and go inwards from there.
Once this is complete, we're going to uh, put the pizza in the oven for another 20 to 30 minutes until it gets golden brown and the cheese is melted and sauce is bubbling. So I'm kind of filling in all the little gaps here. There we go. Perfect. All right, so we will now put this in the oven. So next we have a treat. We have Amanda who is an uh, expert at gluten-free and dairy-free baking and she's going to introduce us to one of her favorite lemon treats. Let's give her a round of applause. Welcome to the show, Amanda. I have heard so much about your cooking and I've just been waiting for this day. Well, thank you, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Very good. I am so excited to hear about how to make a delicious lemon bar that is gluten and dairy free. So how, where should we start? Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, um, let's start by going ahead. Uh, what I'm using is the food processor, Cousinart. Okay. And just open the lid here, set it off to the side. So what we want to start doing is add a half a cup of almonds. And are they raw, unsalted? They are raw. Okay. You can use soaked as well. That would just mean that you would need to alter the lemon juice just by reducing it a little bit um, because there's water in the almonds. So then um, these are also raw, raw cashews, a half a cup. Go ahead and add like so. And then we have a half a cup of um, coconut. And is it unsweetened? It's unsweetened, okay. yes. You can add sweeten for a little bit more of a sweet treat, but okay. yes. I, per I definitely prefer the, the more, uh, natural, more natural, natural feel. Perfect. Yeah, so. same here, same here. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and secure the lid like so, and just pulse just a little bit. And we're looking to get um, coarse crumbs from the mixture. So is it better to just do the short spurts or can you do like a long, long blow? Is it like uh, more efficient to do the shorter spurts? Can you get um, better grinding? Yeah, um, I do that initially just to kind of get things blended and okay. then once they are then I can kind of push that, for a that longer totally period makes sense. of time. Oh, yeah. so. looks pretty good. You, as you can see the mixture has some coarse yeah. crumbs and it's definitely starting to be pretty blended. So then we want to go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. We have a cup of dates. Um, you can use between 8 to 12 dates. We're, we have 10 here. They do have um, seeds in them so we're going to go ahead and take them out. Right, here I'll start with this batch here. And then make sure it does have a, a small stem on the end, so just make sure that those are removed as well. Okay. And they are um, medjidal dates, so they are um, the ones with seeds in them. You can use other dates, but okay. these are my favorite because they're so soft and moist and they just oh, yeah. add such a nice um, texture to the dessert. Yeah, I always uh, prefer things that still have the seeds in them because that was how their natural state. That's how they were meant to be. Uh, I do the same thing with uh, watermelons. I always prefer seeded watermelons. Oh, uh, they yes. They just taste so much better. Absolutely. And I think that's the way, when if they're that way in nature, then it's oh, yes. probably better to keep it that way <laughs> than exactly. trying to alter it. All right. I think mine are all ready. Do we put them in here? Yep, you can go ahead and add them, just kind of evenly distribute it there. Okay. Then we can go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. We have um, lemon zest of one lemon, so let's go ahead and add that first. So basically you would just scrape it on a, a zester um, on all sides 
until there's just a pale white remaining. Okay, and then we have the juice of one lemon, and we I did go ahead and add a couple more, a tablespoon or so more of lemon juice, just um, concentrated. But if you want to do fresh, that's a little bit more, um, has a richer flavor if you do that. But either way, it's very good. So I can go ahead and add that. And uh, you can always remember that uh, trick that Chef Brennan told us where you roll the lemon. That can sometimes get you a greater yield of juice from the lemon. And then at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit of almond extract. Usually about an eighth of a table or eighth of a teaspoon. So not a whole lot. And what do we have here? And then that is pure vanilla, or excuse me, pure lemon extract. Okay. So this is going to be delicious. I would say I would add about half a teaspoon of that. Just for okay. extra lemon flavor. Mm -hmm. You can't have too much lemon flavor. And we're going to go ahead and add some vanilla extract, about a half a teaspoon. It's going to be a good combination, the vanilla and the lemon. It should complement each other very well. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead and... And because this mixture is, it does get a little coarse, sometimes kind of you have to, to help just it along. help it along a little bit. Just kind of scrape, scrape along the sides here. Do you want uh, like a wood spoon or wood, is that spatula working okay for you? Um, this is actually working great. Okay. Thank you. Mm, it smells delicious. As uh, my motto is always, if it smells good, it's going to taste good. And it is really smelling good. So it uh, looks like we'll keep mixing it, right, until it forms a ball on the side? Yeah, it's looking pretty good, Kevin. Yeah, and um, sometimes if it's drier, uh, uh, Amanda was telling me that you could add uh, some coconut water or coconut oil um, and uh, help it along, too, with the spatula. Okay, so it looks like our mixture is done here. So there's two options you can do. You can either roll it into little balls for snack size fun treat or you can press it into a 5 by 7 inch pan and you can put them in the freezer and or refrigerator and then cut them into little bite sized pieces. So two options for you. Today we're going to go ahead and roll them into some balls. Okay. So Kevin, if you want to go ahead and grab just a little bit, maybe like tablespoon size okay. um, for a smaller little snack and just roll them in a little ball and then we're going to just roll them in some coconut and these just look fabulous they almost look like little truffles when you're done mm -hmm. now do you recommend uh, freezing them over refrigerating them or what's your I do um, I prefer them frozen they just have such a nice texture when they get out of the freezer okay. and just kind of cold it's almost like a little ice cream treat kind yeah. of so okay. I I definitely prefer the freezer over the fridge but you can do either mm -hmm. and another option you can do too is you can actually toast the coconut prior to rolling the balls in the coconut and that really gives a richness to the, mm. the dessert these seem like they're going to be delicious. And again, these are completely dairy free and gluten free. So, this is a treat that anyone can have no matter their dietary needs. And they are also raw and vegan, too. So, yeah, Kevin's right. You can pretty much, anyone with any type of dietary needs can have these unless you're allergic to nuts. Oh, yeah, of course. And now we're going to freeze them for about an hour. So we'll check back when they're ready. All right, so it looks like the pizza is ready. So you'll notice how 
the cheese completely melted and the edges of the crust are all brown and then you also look underneath and you'll see that it is starting to turn golden brown on the end. So now we're going to put the tomatoes on. You want to help with this Amanda? Oh absolutely. So let's see here's a four. Just kind of circle them around the top and I'll grab a couple here too. I like to put the tomatoes on last because it's kind of refreshing when it's a hot piece of pizza to have a nice refreshing cold tomato slice. Alright, so now I'm going to slide this off and cut into it. Make sure you kind of keep some of the tomato slices there. There's one of the slices of the pizza, and when we come back, we'll get the wedges out of the oven. Hi again. Nuts can be very nutritious, but by doing one hint, you can actually make your nuts more healthy. That hint is simply to soak them. The harder the nut, the longer you soak. Nuts such as walnuts, only take about 20 minutes. Macadamia nuts, cashews, they're in that same field category of nuts. For things like almonds, Brazil nuts, I would recommend two to three hours. You can even soak them overnight. There's many benefits to this. First of all, it aids digestion. Second of all, it makes it easier to blend in recipes. And third, it actually bumps the nutritional value because it starts the sprouting process. Alright, so now we have our potato wedges. Again, they were lightly salted and herbed with the extra virgin olive oil, so we'll put those right here on the side. And then we're going to bring out your masterpiece, Amanda. Look at those. They turned out beautifully. Thank you, Kevin. So now we'll put a couple of those on here to finish off this delectable meal. Remember, it's all completely gluten-free. So as always, all these recipes will be on the website and you can find Amanda's lemon bar or lemon balls under the Guest Chef Recipe tab on the website at cookingwithkevinshow.com. As always, keep cooking with Kevin. Thank you.